We don't have a theory of consciousness or creativity. If we did, we could program these into a computer. If you can't program it, you haven't understood it, says David Deutsch. Consciousness and creativity are mysterious. Now, this doesn't mean they're insoluble problems. They must be soluble because they are just features of the mind. Anything we can do must be the result of physical processes, and all physical processes are computable. David proved this mathematically in the same paper that laid the foundation for quantum computation. This rules out any supernatural explanation for what our minds are doing, or what we human beings are. Mysterious things are just problems, that's all. Questions unanswered. Yet some people deny some problems are even problems. The philosopher Daniel Dennett denies consciousness is a problem. He says it's an illusion. The philosopher Sam Harris denies free will is a problem. He says that's an illusion. In both cases, I think they are mistaken, and for the same reason. We humans are special creatures. But there is nothing supernatural about us, nothing magical. Yet there is something unique. Why is it that people, alone among all animals, solve problems by creating explanatory theories? What is this strange thing that leads to thoughts and minds, solutions, philosophy, science, technology and civilization? What is it about people that allows for these qualitatively different capacities we have over any other system in the known cosmos? Now, like a fish or a dog, we've got a finite genome. But unlike in a dog or fish, something is in that genome that codes for something very special indeed. A code for a brain that is able to run a mind that is universal in a special way. This universal capacity is the capability to create explanatory knowledge. That is such an important fundamental discovery in philosophy by David Deutsch that its import cannot be overstated. It's as important as it is unnoticed as of 2018. Why is this fact not informing and animating research programs and AGI institutes and university philosophy departments? I don't know. It's as if the equivalent of the question, what is mass, was answered and most physicists simply ignored it. David answered the question, what is a person? Few you've noticed. A person is an entity that can create explanatory knowledge and is universal in its capacity to do so. What universal here means is there is no problem in principle that a person is incapable of tackling. And the reason for this is that the mind, which is the software running on the hardware that is the brain, is a universal computer, and then some. It is a universal computer that is conscious of its own states, can direct its own future states, and importantly, whose output cannot be specified in advance. And that's the key. We cannot specify the output of a general intelligence, artificial or otherwise. Unlike for any other program we do write, we people are general intelligences. We create new knowledge. Subjectively, we experience consciousness. But do other people? Well, we cannot directly access their conscious states. We cannot experience their inner subjectivity. Yet how do we know they're conscious? Well, what we do have access to are other people's creativity. We know other people are creative because we notice them solving their problems. They're inventing things and making decisions out there in the world. So with an objective indication in the form of their creativity of their inner conscious states. The problems that interest them, we can see. The creativity of people we observe in the world is a unique thing people have that other animals do not share. So while we, while we feel conscious ourselves, what we observe in others is creativity. So I postulate, creativity of the kind where people create explanations or create knowledge is just the outward manifestation of an inner consciousness. What it feels like to be creative is consciousness. Free will is that aspect of consciousness where I am able to obtain a good sense of my preferences and act upon them, that is to say choose. But to know what my preferences truly are, I need to carefully deliberate. I need to solve that problem, create that knowledge as to what my preferences are. Outward eventually, someone will notice me make a decision, but inwardly only I know that I felt many different things before the decision was made. Emotions perhaps like excitement or confusion or the thrill at making a new insight. It was all me that contemplated this problem for perhaps hours on end. 
I chose this interesting solution rather than some other. I was free to do otherwise, to not think about it at all, in fact, if I desired. If I had that conscious state and chose to pursue it and pay attention to it or not. Inwardly, it was a conscious sensation of free will, but outwardly, it was a choice made to create knowledge in that area. These things are all facets, I would argue, of exactly the same phenomenon, what it means to be a human and explain the world. So what I do as a person is exercise a free choice in acting on the best explanation I have created. And now, I choose to end this video.